What's going on folks, Ted from Nerd Immersion here and I am at Gen Con in a very chill, relaxed interview here with Matt Lillard from Beetle and Grimm. So how are you doing? Uh, I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if you're supposed to say that, but yeah, I'm, I'm pretty exhausted. Well, I mean, it's no surprise. This, the booth has been absolutely swamped because you guys have all sorts of stuff here. You've got from your D&D stuff, Pathfinder, the Critical Role, and then your new dice as well. Yeah, it's been, um, it, we're in, all of a sudden, <laughs> If you pan out a little, we've got we're like in the middle of all the traffic. Yeah, it's crazy. Um, so yeah, so we we it's been that thing where, you know, when you're just grinding along and you're a company that's pretty much exclusively online, I don't think you really know the impact you have until you come to a place like Gen Con. Not only your fans coming to see you because they've gotten to know you over the years, but in our fifth year, we're, we've ex sort of exploded in a way sure. that I don't think any of us were expecting, quite frankly, and. It's been super exciting, and we're super proud, and, and we're thrilled, but it's been a long weekend. Yeah, so I saw you have Spelljammer stuff is coming out. What's kind of, and I don't know if you can and can't talk about, what's the kind of, the, obviously the dice is a newer thing, but what's the sort of, what is your future roadmap? What are you looking to do in the future? Well, you know, we're always looking to expand. We're certainly looking for other systems and other, um, you know, other games, other RPG systems, other universes to expand our sort of box editions. I mean, if, if people don't know, we, we create high-end box editions for Dungeons and Dragons, Pathfinder, Critical Role. Um, uh, and so, yeah, so we're always looking for new opportunities like that. We're looking for new opportunities outside of RPG. Our belief is that if you cater to um, people that have fandoms and you, and you build really high-end stuff, that, that the people that have that kind of disposable income will 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 find it and sure. so that's what that's what we're trying to do yeah i mean it's like i said we were talking a little bit before and i mean i didn't know some of these products were things that i wanted to have because like, i you know i'm out there at a library or something printing out maps or trying to go to a staples and get a plotter and it's like oh, i could get it nicely rolled up and get props to do these different things and it's all self-contained and especially if you're you know a newer dm or you're worried about having all that stuff everything's available to you which is a really awesome product to just be able to pick up yeah our north star is can we make the GM, dm's job easier can we make the gameplay more immersive so even if you have the access to a huge printer to do battle maps um, you know you you, you don't have the ability to make jewelry pieces sure. or to make uh, coins of the realm or so you know and we have finger puppets and straw yeah. like so we're always finding things that even if you have the time and energy, you won't have the ability. Mm -hmm. And we have six to eight months to create these boxes, and we put a, a lot of passion into them. You know, and I just want to say, by the way, I, I did say right before this is like, you know, if you have disposable income, our whole belief is that if you amortize a game over the life, one of our boxes over the life of your game, it's not very expensive. Sure. Um, its initial price is pretty expensive, but if you amortize that out, it's, it's not um, overwhelming. And I feel like a lot of people think that our brand is about super expensive and I can't afford it, but um, you know, we, you know, we're, we're always trying to find other ways to bring all the players in. Like our dice sets are $25. Um, so yeah, so I don't know. It's just, I, I always feel like <laughs> we always feel subconscious that people think of us as a luxury good and we are expensive, but I believe if five people are on the table, six people are on the table, if everyone chips in, it's not that expensive. Right, and I mean, how long does a campaign run for, right? Six months, eight yeah. months, a year? Yeah, yeah. And if you, if it, you know, it's, it's as much as, a, you know, a pizza and <laughs> two, two liters of Coca-Cola to, you know, amortized out, so. Right. Yeah, I never really thought about it that, that way because that's something I hear a lot, too, is people are like, I don't know if I could do that. But you're right. If it's split between the DM, the players, yeah. and however else, it's just like, yeah. okay, and yeah, right, you're getting a pizza anyway. Well, yeah, yeah, maybe we don't get the second pizza. Five, if, you, if everyone throws in five bucks every game, it will be covered. It will definitely be covered. But look, I, you know, I, I don't know. I just, we, we are always trying to, I know it's like, I'm so tired. I can't put together a of thoughts. But, you know, we're always trying to, like, I don't know. We we want we want all gamers. We want to make people's games great, and that's our that's sort of our how we build the company. And every time I see you guys at a con or anywhere, you're always got something new. You're innovating, whether it's whether it is jewelry or these dice sets. So it's also you know you didn't just make a box set and say this is all we're going to do and just sit with yeah. that. You're willing to innovate and try new things to get we to are. the rest of the market. We totally are. I mean, we're doing artifacts now. I just did Igby's Cauldron, which is yeah. an incredible piece. We have a thing called rolling ish which are these bean bags it's super simple yeah that sit in front of because as when i dm i hate tracking initiative so 
So it's something that allows the players to do it. We look, we are gamers. Um, I think a lot of the things that people, you know, we're gamers first, and we try to make we try to approach every product from that point of view. So, what would you say is your favorite thing that you've done out of all the products you've made? If it's one specific piece or a yeah. certain box set? Well, it's our first thing, right? I mean, we took the initiative. We we had this dream about doing something different other than what we've been doing all our lives. Mm -hmm. We're five of us. We're five gamers. I always joke it's our midlife crisis, but <laughs> we were just, we wanted to do something else with our lives. And so we sat around and we talked for a long time about what we should do. We're talking about doing like, you know, should we do an escape room? Should we do, you know, a box company that sends out, you know, secret boxes every month? And it wasn't until we hit on this idea of, um, you know, a box edition for Pearl Jam is like for the ultimate fan. And that's what we became for Dungeons & Dragons for these other brands. But uh, the thing I'm most proud of is the fact that we did it, that we had a dream, that we found something we really loved. None of us, it, you may think we're independently wealthy because I'm um, in movies and stuff, but I'm not. We all kicked in a, a very modest amount of money and started building with work and with reinvesting every single dollar back in the company. We didn't take any money out of the company for the first three years. So, you know, that's the thing I'm most proud of is that we built something out of a passion and out of a love that you know, started out as a hobby and something simple and it's become a legitimate business now. Like our, two of our partners have now left their full-time careers. Another one's leaving by the end of the year. So it's, um, that's the thing I'm most proud of is that we're, we're chasing something that we really love. And I mean, it, like I said, it clearly shows, but that's awesome for folks that are out there. I mean, it's, that's also never too late to start something like this, right? If you have an idea for a project or something, a service you can provide, People should just go out there and chase it. Yeah, we were lucky enough to be at the Ennies last year, and you see the community, and you see people and their passion for what they're doing, um, you know, the love of this community. And there are a lot of people out there who are supplementing their daily lives with the money that they're making off of the RPG community. But again, it's going back to, and you walk around this con, right? You walk around Gen Con, it's massive, it's huge. There's you know, 100,000 people here this weekend. And they're all out here to support and find the things that they love. So look, build things that you love for the game you love, and you will find a way to succeed. I can't think of a better way to end it on such a motivational oh, speech. So, well, yeah. thank you so much for having this interview How with me. How about these knees? How about these knees? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, thank oh, you so much. Yeah, bro, thanks for having us, and we appreciate your support. Yeah.